Many data scientists and engineers swear by Jupyter Notebooks to do exploratory data analysis, data cleaning, and machine learning. The data they're working with could be in a plethora of formats like CSV or Tableau, but could also come from a data source like Postgres. If the data you're working with is time series data, then there's a real chance that your data is stored inside TimescaleDB. So in this video, I want to show you how to query your TimescaleDB database from inside a Jupyter Notebook. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Mathis and I'm a developer advocate at Timescale. And today we'll learn how to connect to TimescaleDB from inside our Jupyter Notebook. Jupyter Notebooks come in many shapes and sizes, but lucky for you, the process of connecting to your TimescaleDB instance is identical across all notebooks. So whether you're using Google Colab or a self-hosted Jupyter Notebook, you can follow along to this video without having to change anything. The only thing we need to connect to TimescaleDB is the PsychoPG2 library. In some cases, this will already be installed, like on Google Colab, but in other situations, you might need to manually install it like this. We import the sys package and then use that to get the location of the Python executable. From there, we call pip and install psychopg2. This is kind of a convoluted way of installing a package in a notebook, but tends to work better than just calling the pip executable. Once we've done that, we can import psychopg2 as normal. Let's execute this cell and see that everything works. Next up, we'll actually connect to our TimescaleDB instance. To do that, we'll create a variable to store a connection string. In Timescale Cloud, you can find the connection string of your instance under the connection info panel. Just don't forget to add your password to this string. If you're self-hosting TimescaleDB, the host in this connection string would be something like localhost, the IP of your server, or the endpoint of a load balancer. Then we use the psychopg2 connect function and pass in our connection string to get the connection object. From that connection, we can easily get the cursor object that allows us to execute Postgres commands on our database. If we run this code, nothing should happen as we're just connecting to our database. We've technically completed the goal of this video, connecting to TimescaleDB, but let's take it a step further and query some data. In another cell, we call the execute function on our cursor. We pass a string that contains our query as an argument. In my case, I'll just query for the time, temperature, and humidity in a table called sensor. But obviously, depending on your data and use case, this could be anything you like. We can retrieve the results from our query using the fetchAll function. This function returns an array, so we can very easily iterate over it. In our iteration loop, we can pretty print the returned rows. In a real-world scenario, this is where you'd import other tools from your data science toolbox, like NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib. But that's a topic for another video. If you'd like to see that video, or other videos about data science and engineering, let us know in the comments down below. I hope you enjoyed this video. My name is Mathis, and I'll see you next time.